after getting your uh, amounts of shares that you wish to eat. And you get to the Coliseum, and once again, there's people cheering. Um, and uh, first up would be Jared's character is Zephyr is led off into the ble or uh, into the locker area. Well, the rest of you are led to your sectioned off bleacher area. Again, does anyone wish to fight or not do this? Nope. Okay, I just I need to make sure I'm not I don't want to force you. I need to make sure if you want to do something different, if you want to do something different, but <laughs> for I can't so license to trace it. I don't. All right, so you're all sitting there, and once again, from the one room, you're able to see them, and the rest of you are out in the uh, stadium where you're obviously able to see them. The white-haired man comes out once more. Speaking up, he goes, and so we begin day two. <laughs> Fuck the Today, man. dodging the prize. Golden Winged Boot Trophy. If you can see it, it's a trophy with a winged boot made of gold on it. This event is to dodge until you are hit. At first, we shall throw rocks, then arrows shall be shot, and lastly, if you're able to make a pass all these, we'll actually have a mage shoot a spell at you. <laughs> Magic missile! Ah. Oh. Meteor Storm. Oh god, meteors. Come on now, no. He just creates an astral rift right inside of your heart. Oh, so I'm basically something uh, less familiar. What? No, anyway. Uh, <laughs> that's not what happens. That's oh. not happening to you guys. Uh, so... At this, then, you see him sit down, and it is called for the first contestant that matters, and it is Estreyu, a human cleric, female. She walks Estreyu? up. No, I added some letters to it, but yes, Tate, uh, shut up. <laughs> she walks up. And the first rock is thrown at her. Give me rock? one second real quick. Oh god, it's the, the lottery all over again. <clears throat> but she who is without sin cast the first stone. Wrong time period, Tate. Wrong time oh. period. So did he mean cast the first stone? Or did he mean make a mold out of the first stone? <sighs> percentile die. Alright, so this is gonna be, just so you know, for your sake, uh, Jared, <clears throat> this is going to be a um, reflex save for you. Okay. You're you're not up yet, so I'll let you know. Actually, I probably would have been I'm pretty okay in this competition. I have a plus five to deck saves. The first rock is thrown, and she nimbly dodges it. Once again, the same thing. A second rock uh, is also thrown at her. Once again... Dodging. Unfortunately, the first arrow flies through the air, dealing... Oh shit, this is fatal. Dealing seven points of damage to her, which Jesus. does not kill her. But the first arrow goes straight into her side, and you hear a loud pain full scream come from her and a buzzer is run and two 
cleric-y type people come out and rush her back into the locker room. Past you, Jared, and into the back area. I lean towards Lamb. That was like my hangover last night. From last night. Next up we have Zole, the half-elf paladin human. Yeah! <clears throat> God damn it, Lamb. So, Lamb, how's the, uh... Um, unfortunately so... for her, the first rock lands right on her face, and, uh, <laughs> the buzzer rings! <laughs> She failed. Next up, so, we have. Oh, oh go uh, ahead. In response to Tate talking, can I cast light in his face again? <laughs> I mean, you can, but I don't know why you would. You're in the bleachers with everyone. But if you want to, go for it. It might. Just, I'm, I'm it not might. very happy with Tate right now. I just like to see if my character was going to be petty or not. He's How many you... petty? That's up to you on how you treat your character. How many uses does your well, character no, get right. on that spell? Uh, four, I believe. Four uses? Okay. Um, yes. yeah, no. You you can cast your magic whenever. It's up to you. Um, the city might not appreciate it. How you want to, and if it's going to... Right, if it's going to be appreciated and whatnot. But I can't necessarily tell you no. It's just keep in mind any repercussions that happen, it's basically all on you. Yeah, that's fair. I have five casts a day, so. That's fair enough. So do you use your uh, second one and cast it right now on him? Just yes. a quick flash? Okay. Yes. Tate, roll a fort save real quick. Why'd you do this to me? Because I did a check and my character wants to be petty. 17. You make it this time and uh, you have a large light dot in your eye. You know, like if you've ever stared at a light and there's that little yeah. ball of whatever, yeah, uh, you have that now, so it's hard to see and you're blinking, but it doesn't like fuck you up. Could can I be petty all day? I already did this Please, once. No the flash angle was gone. <laughs> yeah, kind of. God damn it. <laughs> uh, you see some people look at you there if you look around lamb with a little bit of the taste for using magic right now one of the guards walks up and goes hey knock it off and he walks away from you i'm the thane of this city oh we can't so do that's what happens that. he gave you your first warning um next up we have zephyr how do you say your character's name again zephyr we have zephyr the Scout. This is your cue to walk out then. And do you walk out? I any slowly special walk way? out and then bow to the uh, announcer. As you bow and as you begin to get yourself up, you just hear it's them say, "Begin. Roll me a reflex." Seventeen. You nimbly dodge from the first rock. Roll once more. Twelve. Once more, you are easily able to dodge the second rock. Granted, this one, it, it seems like maybe the guy's arm was getting tensed up. Because you could tell, even if you didn't move, he missed. I'm not saying I rolled shitty. I'm just saying I rolled shitty. <laughs> Roll once more. Another 12. Okay. You are able to not get hit. The arrow literally flies past your head. Roll again. 16. You're able to dodge it. Granted, you're pretty sure the arrow hit your, your, uh, whatever it's called, cloak. Roll one more time. As you see another man 
who looks like a tiefling, stand and just point his hand at you. His his uh, arm extended with his hand open. Nineteen. Damn. Marcus. Give me a second. He's, he's casting, casting light. Hands. You take half damage anyway. He ca he's casting light. I lean over to him. Is he casting light? Color spray. I'm sorry, Jared. Uh, I did not confirm the critical, but it did confirm the hit. You do not miss as a fireball launches out of his hand and slams directly into you. Give me one second. Ow. Dealing 14 points of damage to you and lighting your cloak on fire. Owie. Does that knock you out? I think it yes. does. Yes, it does. At this, all of you witness a rather large fireball launch out of this man's hand and slam into him, enveloping him real quickly in a plume of fire. When it dissipates, you see him fall to the ground with his cloak still on fire. And as it burns a little bit of his cloak, some people rush out real quick with buckets of water and dirt, throwing it on him. But you're able to see something glittening beneath his robes. Sorry, Everyone... you say glittening? Glittening. Yeah. Glittening. I... Glistening? Glistening, I'm sorry. Glistening, glistening. beneath his robes. Glittening. Everyone roll me a uh, spot check. Except for Jared. Um, would Jared, I also Jared, be able to roll a spot check on yourself. Do I see the afterlife? Would I also be able to make a knowledge arcana check on the spell? Uh, no, Jared. You literally get hit with the fireball and are, like, knocked out. That wasn't Jared, but okay. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Who said it? Lamb. You know, oh. the mage. Uh, Lamb. What'd you say? <clears throat> would I be able to make a knowledge arcana check on the spell? Yeah, you could. But no, I said for, uh, Jared, did you ask if you had witnessed the aftermath? Oh. No, I said, do I see the afterlife? Oh, no, the, the afterlife. afterlife. <laughs> no, you're just knocked out. I'm not, yeah, we're, we won't, we won't go there yet. 17, plus 5. Uh, or 10. Lamb. What's your spot? My spot. Technically 22 for me. Hang on, I'll go around the table in a minute. Okay. In the meantime, I'm gonna adjust my uh I'm gonna adjust my Adobe. What's your what you got a fourteen, but what's your your skills uh natural modifier? For knowledge or combat? For, no for for spot. Hold on. Otherwise I can always bring it up too. I have your character sheet. As long as you didn't roll a three. Sorry, what was that? What's my spot modifier? Yeah. Yes. My spot modifier is a one. All right, so you got a 15. Um, and then for Knowledge Arcana, I rolled a four for you. My, it's a plus seven, so. So what did you get on Knowledge Arcana? I have a plus seven to knowledge arcana. All right, so you got an 11. Give me a second. Different music would be great here, too, by the way. Bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. You said you had to adjust your Adobe. Yeah, um, you know that this is, in a sense, a third level sorcerer or wizard spell. 
So in terms of in-game, not mechanical sense, this isn't necessarily a high-level spell, but it is definitely not a common spell because of it being a low uh, magic world. So this is something that it's clearly a, a wizard or sorcerer or, in a sense, a mage that kind of knows what he's doing. Does that make sense to you? Sorry, my mom was talking to me. I did not catch any of that. That's okay. So, sorry. so mechanically, you know that this is a third uh, level sorcerer wizard spell. Roleplay wise, what you know is this is not a high level spell, but it is not a low level spell. Your right. character would know this as being being a low magic world. This is clearly a guy that knows magic. It's not just he can kind of do magic like you can right now. He actually must know magic. All right. Awesome. Thank um, as far as spot goes, you said you had a 15. Uh, Kelb? Three. Tate? 22. Noah? Nine. Des Moines? Fourteen. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Tate and Lamb, you are able to make out that the glistening underneath of the robe is clearly armor. It is not, as far as they're aware, there's something metal, but you guys can clearly were able to make out that that's armor. Um, as this happens, though, you see the clerics start to pick up. Let me roll real quick. A shrink check to see that. if they can pick him up. They try to pick him up. They start to lift him, get him maybe a third of a foot in terms of up off of the ground, and drop him with a clank, revealing from his hood with the mask slightly falling off. He is, in fact, wearing armor. There are gasps in the crowd. The uh, white-haired man stands up and goes, asks for them all to quiet down. And as they do, he asks uh, the mage at the side to come over to him. And uh, when you see him walk away and then walk back towards him, only now in the area that the white-haired man is in, you see him whispering something. You're not sure what he's saying. And uh, you see him just bow and head off. And you see a woman. Um, who was the character last time that got killed? No, no was that, that was my opponent. Oh, no, that was your opponent. Who was the one that saw the guy that got killed? It was me. All was... right. Demois, roll me knowledge anything you feel fitting on a person based on okay. that stuff I had told you earlier I, I, I had already prepared for that knowledge I, did knowledge of, I did knowledge arcana and I got a 26 side prepped that already um, but All I right. can re-roll if you want me to you know out of your studies that you're pretty sure this is the same woman you've studied before and that that man had told you about um, with me saying that you guys probably are now realizing that guy is about four bleachers up and off to the right. Even though he was dead, he's clearly sitting there. Um, but as she comes out, you see her just lean down. There's a kind of a light near Jared's character. And Jared, you suddenly can see. Put yourself at full health. Okay. Then you're able to get up. As you open your eyes and are able to get up, she says to you, get up. She does not sound nice about it. I quickly stand up and try and dust off myself, noticing my burnt cloak. Your mask also fell off if you look down on the ground. I look at it, but I don't reach down for it yet. I just look at the woman who, who's ordering around. 
She uh, reaches up towards where the cloak is tied together and just as far as basically like... takes it off of you, revealing your entire armored body. At this point now, I'd like you to actually describe what your character looks like. This would be the first time you actually describe what he looks like. Do I actually notice anything since I fucking rolled a three? Uh, you didn't notice the armor at first, so you had no heads up. So Tate and Lamb get a, can act a little differently of a... They know what's about to happen. The other three of you are... Your characters wouldn't even have expected. You were expecting maybe he had something hidden. Not he's wearing full-on armor. That's not what it is, but character-wise, not that he's full, full, wearing full-on armor. But at that, please describe what you look like, uh, Jared. I am 5'10", very lanky, um, very kind of thin-limbed. But my, my limbs and my body are coated in large plates of armor that you might notice slight ligaments that look a bit more like stone and bark, but it, it's pretty what that would be very small slits. The uh, helmet kind of looks like, or the, yeah, the head look, looks kind of three section, like a dome on each side, and then a uh, strap that goes from the back to the front with the the mask. It looks very much facial features. The uh, mouth guard looks just like, rather than a guard, an actual mouth, and yellow eyes in the opening that are not really behind the opening anymore are the opening my hands and feet rather than having the standard five digits have essentially three digits like a a thumb with uh your uh hands in uh the spock uh peace and prosperity so it's just like two fingers that are kind of wide As well as the armor is blue because it is mithril to probably primarily Kelb's character that would know what that metal is. I'm sure my character would know that. <laughs> exactly. That's why I say your character would absolutely know that's mithril. Others, you probably would. I mean, you could realistically take 10 on this and be able to figure it out, so I'm not going to bother having you roll. Um, still, though. That is what you for, see. Yeah, for being armor, it's it's very form fitting if it is armor. Seven. Yep, already got it. Welcome back, Lamb. And uh, uh, Jared's character finally got revealed as what he is technically. Publicly, or when they carried them into the oh, building. Oh no, publicly. He is out in the open, and she okay. removed the cloak off of him right then and there. Okay. Uh, the crowd once again gasps to an extent at this. And uh, what do the rest of you do before I continue on with what happens? Anyone intrigued or surprised? Um, yeah. Um. Oh, oh. A fluffy man. Yeah. So. I'm I'm trying to think why I would row. Give me just one second here. Keep in mind, in terms of this world, this is different. He looks like the fabled golems that are apparently in some of the cities, but it's... Golems are, um... Existent, but not. It's kind of like, oh, this human city t might have golems. There's conspiracies that some of the higher rich ones use them for purposes. But it's not even that common. Purposes. Well, um, you know, maybe like to fix their stuff or to uh, fix or fix. Well, both depends on the order. Um, <laughs> um, um, I want to roll knowledge of Arcana to see if there is any like um, I guess um, go magic ahead, roll about your... this being. Yeah, just roll uh, knowledge Arcana. I'll let you know what you know. Um. Lamb, you could probably do the same because you have Knowledge Arcana as well. Honestly, I think I would just take note of the Mithril and that's really about it. Right. I mean, all all five of you should be like, whoa, because this is a new. I think... Like, this is literally think... um, having a Martian appear in front of ancient Egypt, almost. Oh, God. 
like, oh, that's bedroom. interesting, but it's too fucking shiny. I would actually be on the edge of my seat, and I would turn towards Lamb and go, you know, you know, this is, this explains a lot. Really, it does. Okay, I got 18. Um, although these guys might not know, and if Lamb wishes to roll a uh, Knowledge Arcana, well, here, Lamb, do you want to roll Knowledge Arcana or no? Uh, sure. I rolled a one for you. So I got a total of eight. Fantastic. Um, you know... <laughs> the reason Lamb... I want to roll my physical dice. Yep, I'll tell what Lamb knows first, because he knows less to Moise. Uh, Lamb, you know this is something magical, and that, uh... You're not sure what it is. If it's, like, armor grafted onto a person or a living set of armor or what this is. You just know that clearly he doesn't look like he's a man just simply in armor because it's way too, we'll call it precise. And the fact that it looks form fit even though it's armor. Uh, Demois, because of the fact that there's also all the stone and, and your own knowledge and everything... You know that this is some a fabled form of some sort of construct. You're not sure if this is a, a golem or just a simple construct or if perhaps this is some kind of thing that you had seen called a warforged, but there wasn't much knowledge on what they are. It's just mentioned that there was a being known as warforged at a time. Um... That was an improvement. You could call it a third generation of constructs. Nevertheless, though, uh, I mean, third generation isn't quite right, but that's the term I'm going to use. Uh, nevertheless, though, that's what you know, is that this is clearly something much more advanced than probably anyone here would actually understand, potentially. And again, for Kelb's sake, Kelb, that's Mithril. That's... That's mithril. That the shit's pricey, yo. The man's a walking fucking... Yeah. Yeah, that... Potentially to Kelb's character, depending on his uh, person, his character's personality, that man's a walking pay stub. <laughs> Let's see, it's probably gonna be around a thousand-ish gold, if I remember the price on mithril correctly. Also depends on the height and weight of uh, Garrod. That's true. We well, said five nine for height. I don't know about weight though. Five ten. I have oh, it five, written 10. down as one eighty five, but that's based off of human height and weight because I wasn't sure how much because there wasn't really a chart for me. Yeah, no, you would weigh quite a bit more. Yeah. I can let you know later, but you're gonna weigh quite a bit more than one eighty five. Probably closer to like two fifty. Mithril is mithril. light, but. It's the fact that you are literally made of stone and wood. You're not made of flesh and bone. I'll, and then, I was just guessing, still. by the way. I was just thinking uh, in the upper 200 pounds. That's fine. So, oh God, where the fuck is it coming anyway, from? Anyway, um, that's what you guys see. And I guess that's what you say and think. At this, you you hear uh, the woman go, What are you getting at? To you, Jared. I nod my head to her. I'm sorry if my form offends you, but the robes and the mask were so that if someone sees how I look, they would not be as scared. What do you mean by scared? That you were cheating wearing armor? I'm sorry, but as far as I know... If you are wearing clothes, that is fine. I cannot remove my skin, and neither can you, as far as you are willing to. At that, you see her eyes widen and go, I see. She simply looks up at the white-haired man and goes, This should be allowed. He just nods his head and goes, Very well. Please move back into the lockers. She guides you there. I gather up my fallen pieces around me and follow after. You know... I, I 
I lean over to Lamb. This is probably one of the weirdest days I think we've had. Yeah, this is probably one of the weirdest days. Basically, every person that lives and is in the Coliseum right now has had. I greatly disagree because I created Tate. Okay, correction. <laughs> this, he does have a point. This might not be the weirdest, but it's definitely gets to make your list. <laughs> For some of the others, it's the weirdest. But for you, I guess it makes the list. <laughs> Nevertheless, oh my God. Um, I, I feel like, I feel like I would be intrigued to study him now. You might. So uh, at this, then there's a slight pause, and then he goes, "All right, well, we shall have our last contestant come out." Can you see a female elf ranger who I forgot to name? So I'm not going to bother with making up a name. Oh, oh, oh can I name what? her? Yeah, go for Susie. it. All right, let me write it down. Her name is Susie. Susie Q. I think it, she actually is named in another sheet, and I just forgot to transfer it, but I, yeah. I just, I just wanted to name her Susie because, oh, yeah, I, Susie. I understand. So, she walks out, and uh, the first rock. <clears throat> misses. The second rock, uh, she takes straight. Well, she takes straight to the face because she rolled a fucking one, and uh, yeah, slammed right in the face. And Good job. at that, she's it, also Susie. led back into the God room. Damn it, Susie. Now, Jared, while this is going on, and that's what they are seeing, you are led back into the room, and you see the woman that was shot with an arrow sitting perfectly fine, and just kind of collecting her things uh but now sh she and all the others are also looking at you like staring wise do you say or can do I, anything can, can i say one more thing in response to after seeing uh jared's character the lamb sure you know in hindsight this will probably get a lot of this uh a lot of people staring off of me onto him no, nope, true, but both. that's not necessarily a good thing. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, we are on the same team, so. Yeah, true. We'd rather not bring too much attention to ourselves. Too much attention? Goddamn! We've got a construct, a fucking fox thing, of the happiest gnome I've ever seen in my life. You don't have a gnome, first off, and secondly, you well, don't know gnome. it's a construct, Tate. I know I don't, but I, I'm speaking out like out of character as me. Right. Well, I, out of uh, that sense and just me speaking. Not a gnome. I find it uh, funny. You're like, we don't want to draw too much attention. Listen, you have a dwarf that carries around a tower shield everywhere, a man with wings, a man, a uh, construct, a uh, elf, or uh, not elf, a uh, fox bean. <laughs> <laughs> like, and the normal mm. human that has a sword. Yep. Right, yep, right. and then there's much. the normal human carrying the sword, and then the half-elf that can do magic in a uh, low-magic world that's developing magic, but still. Genius. I can't to wait till our world has magic. <laughs> What's wrong with the dwarf carrying a tower shield, by the way? <laughs> Nothing's it's... wrong with it, but I just assume your you guy carries it dwarf. almost everywhere he goes. <laughs> so it's just Where else am I going to put it? I don't know, that's just why I find it funny. It's just he could go behind it and basically they're like, Oh my <laughs> god, it's a moving shield. It's sentient. It wants to eat you. It just looks like a life size rook. <laughs> yeah, kinda. Oh, by the way, Jared, is your quote unquote skin considered light, medium, or heavy armor? Light. I believe it's light. Okay. Light yeah. So, so yes, that'll be a thousand probably... gold for it being mithril. Yeah. Either that, or it's just like a mithril-like base layer, and then something else underneath. Oh no, he has full-on mithril plating tape. No, I mean, yeah, mithril plating, but underneath the mithril. Would well, yeah, mithril? underneath the mithril is wood and stone and magic. That's how he exists, as magic. Technically, I mean, a bitch it's a little more complicated, and you guys haven't even gone to the places that would actually explain if they would explain why he exists and anyway um so jared what do you do when you go into that back room with everyone staring at you 
I asked the lady who let me in, is there any way I could get a new robe? I understand it's uncouth to wander around naked. Of course, but first, you need to be talked to by a few people. Um, I guess not at first. I'll go get you a robe now, but don't go anywhere. As you wish. At that, she heads out, comes back relatively quickly with a robe, gives it to you. Do you put it on? Yes. All right. Um, and, uh... I also, while she was grabbing the robe, I slid my mask back on. I don't have a bandana to replace it with yet, so just the mask. Okay. And uh, then when she comes back, she says, you can go out and go sit with your teammates. Uh, She looks at everyone. That goes for all of you. Please, go. She looks back at you. But when today is done, you're going to be want to be talked to alone. Okay. Thank you. She just and heads I head off. back out. Uh, how much knowledge do you have on stuff, Jared? Like religion or culture or arcana? I've got a bit of local geography um, and engineering architecture. All right. Um, you wouldn't know too much of it too excessively, though. Uh, just roll me what's knowledge on intelligence yeah yeah roll me a straight intelligence check SBL it's your birthday dad welcome SBL to your birthday this is the perfect song for your birthday SBL actually so my my internet has been healed how'd you heal it by turning off the TV I don't know how that fixes it. What the fuck? I don't know. Tate, aliens. That's how. But, um, you said seven for your roll? Correct. All right. So, you don't really think much of it or realize much from it, but there is definitely a lot of symbols on her, uh, on her cloak, and a couple of them you recognize as different deities. As in, she's not wearing cleric robes of a deity. You can make out that there's a couple of deity things on there. You could keep that over there. Nevertheless, do you head on back out? Yes. Alright, you go ahead and sit down, and at this, the white-haired man goes up and goes, Well, quite a, a interesting last round. Um... Actually, before you sit down, he goes, but our winner is our armored friend here. I was told he is unable to remove his armor, and because of such it being grafted to his body, we have decided to allow it, considering he was still able to dodge. The armor merely protected him from the death, or no. The armor merely uh, protected him from getting singed any more than he needed to be from that fireball from our own... Mage. Fireball! You know, and to actually, be fair, it's pretty impressive to dodge shit while in armor. Yeah, that is it's true. Like a handicap. My internet's actually going to work now, isn't it? Because of the damn TV. Or my game is actually going to work because of the damn TV's off, isn't it? It might. That's how. Well, considering but... by now I usually would have black screened. Nevertheless, uh, Jared, the trophy with the weaned golden boot is brought over to you. And then you were motioned to go sit down. Weaned this golden for you. boot. For yeah, you it's a flash. weaned boot made of gold on top of the trophy. It's not Is a it big flash? boot. No, it, Is it from... I, I was thinking okay. more Hermes, but... Oh. Fair enough. Lamb, did you just exit on purpose? Nope, Lamb died again. Time to go up to eight. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Anyway, so as you sit down then, Jared, it is, and uh, he says, quite the interesting round. Uh, he goes, now it is time for our magical show-off. 
our mages shall come out and show us what they've learned. At this, um, give me one second. Fucking lamb. And there it is. I'm fuzzy. What? I'm fuzzy. What the hell are you going on about? Uh, my brain is slightly fuzzy. Okay, Tate. I understand, because he's drunk. No, I'm not drunk. I'm just slightly fuzzy. Yeah, drunk. Drunk, yeah. That's not drunk at all. Fine, Wait. intoxicated. Lamb's apparently been tasked with drinking a carton of chocolate milk. Why are you... What? What, Why? Lamb? Wait, you know that song, I... SPL? Chug, 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 chug. Sure, no. Hey, I might have had a bit to drink, considering it's been a long fucking day for me. Yeah, it's been a long day for me. That's the only reason why I've drank two. That one. And it hasn't been for me? Question mark? Or Marcus? Yeah. With, you know, his wife? You have access to all of the whole too, don't you? Hey. Alright, alright. So, at this, um, uh, Demois, you were motioned to come down and join a couple of other individuals. And what you see then is the first person walks up and he asks for some clay pigeons to be shot out. They shoot it out and he uses acid splash. He misses all but one of them, but the one he hits does kind of shatter and dissolve a bit. The next individual comes out. They set up some dummies for him that he asked for and he shoots a ray of frost across them. And... Uh, putting ice damage on each of the dummies. Next up would be you, the final of the three people showing off their magic. Okay. One of the helpers, Balam, is there and goes, so kid, what do you need for us to uh, set up for you to show off your magic? Um, let's see here. Like, a lot of my stuff is, like, killing, um... See, divine protection or war is about the only thing that I could like cast on like an an inanimate object. Um, this is just showing see. off any spell or spells that you want to show off. It's uh, okay. Anything you can show off magic wise. Okay. Um, but then if you need something like a clay pigeon to shoot at, then they can send it out. Or if you want like a be surrounded by dummies so you can make a whole bunch of an AOE from around you, hit them all. Yeah, it's it's whatever you wish to, to do. Um could I request like a partner to display like my stuff? Um when you go, can I get a partner? The guy goes, to do what exactly? Um a lot of my spells consist of healing or single target spells. Um, I'm mostly a cleric. So, um, I would like to, um, like, more or less display that as long as, as well as, um, a, a light, light blast. Um, I guess I could use clay pigeons with light blast. Um, and, um, let's see here, or I could do, I could do that with, as well. Here, let me check what you have for spells real quick, and I'll, I'll tell you. I like okay. this song, though, SBL. I, I'm really not sure what I would need, because, like, a lot of my stuff is just straight up healing. <laughs> you heal the clay pigeon for... Well, you have light blast, so that's technically magic. Stone to flesh. Yeah, I have oh, or I, I have <laughs> light. I have light blast and or that I could cast on on something. Um, but the and I could summon my familiar, but the rest is like healing, like the divine protection, um, the channel, the um, the heal, the channel positive energy, um, and. Yeah. 
I see no reason why you can cast any of those on an inanimate object. You could cast, yeah, yeah any of them. One minute. I mean, I really do anything for yeah. the actual spell effect, but I mean, still can put on a show. Right, okay. you're able to cast any of those. Like, if you really wanted to, you could absolutely use Light Blast on something, or summon your familiar to make the the first time they all get to see your familiar, or channel positive energy. I mean, it's going to make light come out of you into something. Or divine protection to make yourself have an aura, or just aura to make yourself have the aura, or just daylight just to create light. Hell, okay. I think Marcus would even permit you to actually combine multiple spells, like summoning your familiar and then casting something on him immediately afterwards. Okay. Yeah. Um... Right, as long as it sounds cool. I mean, again, this isn't like combat where you're stuck to the mechanics of, uh, uh, you have to do it this way, otherwise it breaks the game. This is just role playing, so in a sense, it opens up a little bit more freedom of doing what you want to do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Cast everything at once. Um, I guess I would need some dummies, um, and that would be about it. All right. How would you like them set up? Um, and a circle, a, a surrounding array. Sounds good. Uh, he goes off, they put dummies up around the center of the stage, and head on off and tell you that you're good to go. Okay, first I will cast Celestial Familiar, and summon my familiar. Alright, so go ahead and tell them all what your familiar is. It is a wolf um, cub. At this, the audi a good number of audience uh, kind of awes at it. Um, I, I motion my familiar to attack the targets, and while doing so, I will cast um, divine protection um, on the familiar and. Also, we'll do channel positive energy and cast light blast and on and cast, let's see here, cast daylight as well in a show of just more or less like a, while he's doing this, I'm casting these spells like while he's attacking the targets. All right, so are you shooting light blast at the targets or just like up in the air or where are you shooting light blast at? Um, up in the air to create kind of like a show, like, uh, um, okay. more, more or less like a fireworks show, more or less. All right, so what you guys see is his character comes on out and you see him summon from seemingly him own, his own self a wolf pup come out and he points and says attack or whatever he says and you see it pounce onto the uh dummy and it is attacking but i mean keep in mind it's a wolf pup so it almost looks more adorable than vicious and while Aww. it's doing that you see him shooting off rays of light from himself while creating a ball of light up above them and uh, making himself and the pup begin to glow with some sort of holy-esque light during all of this. Almost like it's a kind of light show to an extent. Uh, when all is said and done, and the pup has taken down a couple of the targets, I assume the Moises character retracts the pup into like a thane of light back into himself. And... Indeed shoots the rest of the targets himself, and ends. How, how do you end, then? Do you, like, bow or just walk yes, away? Or... I would bow. Bows and, and heads sure on up. Make the puppy up. jumps up onto your shoulder. The puppy Pup Tate returns to his being. To my heart. Oh. Yeah. Aww. The puppy lives in your heart. Indeed. The heart puppy. So, he bows and heads back uh, up to the stadium with you guys now that's all said and done and once again the announcer the white-haired man goes well that was quite fantastic
Now, to show you all once more the magnificent power of our own mage, Octomenos, at this, I want you, Demois, to roll a Knowledge Arcana, and uh, whoever else knows Knowledge Arcana, which I believe is just Lamb. Woo! I think I think I had a heart. I think I... Speaking of the puppy returning to Demois' heart, I think I had a heart palpitation. What is that? What What are you talking about, Tate? It's like a heart palpitation, but it's a puppetation. God damn it. Anyway. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, knowledge Arcana, I rolled you a seven lamb. What does that get you to? Fourteen. All right, and then Demois? You roll terribly, by the way. I know I do. I'm sorry. <laughs> B6 plus 8. So I'm trying to do mass here. I'm a little tired. Well, here, for for you, Lamb, take, go ahead and roll for uh, Lamb. I think I haven't gotten 14, 10 because 14. of you. No, Tate, use Lamb's dice. 14. Okay. I got my dice. Wow. And it's I got a 14. Here. Okay. Um, Tate, roll Lamb's. <laughs> Jesus. 19. All right, Tate rolled a 19. So, 26. All right. Uh, Demois, you recognize the name Octomenos. You don't quite remember what's important about it, but you do recognize it. Now, Lamb, you also recognize this as a fabled uh, magic user whom referred to himself as a warlock. And... Some of the things that have been said that he's done seem outrageous, like creating a sword that makes gold into a dragon, as an example, and that he somehow found a way to convert a person's being into a dragon, as in a being converting from human to dragon. Things that just seem outrageous, especially because of the lack of magic in the world. But that's the name you recognize. Right. I will actually um, tell the party about this. All right, so go ahead and tell them what you what you know. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> and Demois, what, you, what he says, this rings a bell for you then, because you recognize it, you just couldn't quite pinpoint it, and this reminds you. Okay. Um, would I be able to hear, though, seeing that I'm on the field? No, you were moving no, back. No, you, you came back up. The, yeah, you were okay. back. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, we can hear okay. the talkers. All of them. But go ahead and say what you uh, know, Lamb. Uh, what you missed, Kelb, is that Demoist did his scene. I kind of explained it uh, uh, in full for him. And then uh, when he sat down, it was stated that a man named Octominos shall now, shall now show magic that uh, the city finds as glorious. And that's when the moist one, I recognize that name, and Lamb went, holy shit, that's the guy I read about. And he's about to explain what he read. So in a lot of the villages I've been going around, I've been trying to figure out what the hell I am. Running across that, I ran across the name Akminos quite often. He claims to be a warlock, but a lot of the things that he says he's done, I'm not sure if they're even possible here. Apparently, he's able to turn one thing into something outrageously different. <laughs> other than that, though, I don't really know too much. Other than that, he's very well known. Not so much well known, he's very well thought of. He'd be like okay. it'd be like if Paul Bunyan turned out to be a real person. He's a story, but turns out he's more than a story. Okay. Sorry. It's fine. Okay. But that's what he tells you guys. Lamb, your internet's been pretty stable. Well, try and join yeah, again, because I turned off the TV. We've, I don't we've know, been over last this. time he joined, after he turned off the TV, he crashed again. Yeah. So <laughs> like, I think we literally right now just works. tested that, Tate. True. Like, that one's still just a processing power issue. 
So, uh, for Kinka Joe, because I can see your, your chat, Tate, is he revered? Is he a legend? Kinda, yeah. As in, some places don't believe yeah, he's better. real, so they believe he's a legend, and this place believes he's real, and that this man walking out is him, so he is revered, in a sense. To be fair, Marcus? Yeah. What they wrote wasn't really a question, it was more of a statement. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Damn it uh, your logic. I'm going insane, I guess. Anyway. Um, so, Lamb, why didn't you chime in with that? What? Why didn't you chime in with that? Why did I have to? Um, because I'm not looking at chat? I have it on the bottom right hand of my screen, so I can see the latest three things that are said, basically. I have it on my phone. I, I pretty much have it the same way, Marcus. Only I see about ten lines of chat. I have it on my laptop. <laughs> I only see eight, so you're beating me there, Kelb. It's off recording in 720p on a 1080 screen. Anywho. Anyway, um, so the man you see walk out then from a doorway different than the locker rooms is the same man that shot the fireball. This is a warlock. Or, uh, tiefling. At first, you weren't able to tell what necessarily color he is, but now you can make it out that it's not that he has black hair. He has a very, very dark blue hair that, without the light, looks black. And it's not that he has black skin. It's a very, very dark red skin with, again, without light, looks black. God, you thought it was black, you bastards. And while he's walking out, you can also make out that his eyes aren't just, like, yellow. They are gold. They are literally gold. Metallic looking and all. He walks out center stage. He just smiles and waves at everyone. Cre uses, as far as you can tell, on being on shore uses a spell causing there to be clouds and uh, different beams of light coming out of the clouds as if he's controlling the weather to an extent. Causes the earth below him to raise him up onto a platform. Makes the clouds begin to rain on all areas in the arena, but not in the stadiums or on himself. I'm back. And lastly, as he does this, and the, the crowd is just looking in awe, and the characters at No Magic are probably looking in awe even more, and I'll have you roll a ma Magic Arcana here in a minute to know why, you see him create a hexagonal kind of beehive-shaped walls in the area that's getting rained in. And it looks rainbow at this, Rainbow. he just disperses, disperses it all in one motion, having it sink into the ground, including the clouds. And as, as that sinks down, along with the platform, he gets down, the crowd cheers, and he walks off. Now, real quickly, for those that know magic, go ahead and roll me magic arcana. Noah, roll it for me. Yeah, someone else but me roll it for, for Lamb. Because God knows Marcus is terrible. I'll roll him a one. Again. Five. Damn. God no damn one didn't do much. Twelve. Wasn't I supposed to roll? I don't Kappa. know. It can be I, anyone. I'm just gonna call out someone in the group. Yeah, so he'll call someone Fine. else. He called him this time. Demois, what'd you get? Best box, buddy. Sixteen. Sixteen. Um. <laughs> give me a second. Synonym rolls, just like grammar used to make. Thank you, Jared. Oh. Fuck you, Jared. My <laughs> hangover just got fucking worse. I'll be right back. I'm gonna take a quick restroom break. <laughs> he's gotta go, uh. He's gotta go, uh, punctuate how bad that pun was. And now I'm just munching on coffee beans over here, so I don't hear the fox lady talking anymore. <laughs> what 
what have we already gone? Someone went to the bathroom, but... Ah, 